San Diego State, and I think San Diego State has been pointed out here through their media relations department. San Diego State, or Steve Fisher, I should say, Steve Fisher and by extension Brian Dutcher, and Billy Donovan are the only two college coaches in the country who have multiple players who they coach at the collegiate level who are competing in the NBA Finals, which starts tonight just past 6 o'clock. So what a great opportunity for us to say hello to Brian Dutcher, who went to the NBA Finals, I believe, last year to watch Juwan Howard with the Miami Heat. I don't know if he's going to go. I guess if he's sitting at his desk, that's our, that's our answer. He's not going to the NBA Finals, but he joins us now via the Western Exterminator Hotline. Coach, good to talk to you again. Hey, Darren, good to be back. Well, I haven't. I don't believe that you and I have spoken on air since the end of the regular season, so I'm going to start away from the NBA Finals and, and just let you know something. When we went to the Final Four and the Fab Five all showed up there, we had an opportunity at halftime to go up with Jimmy King, and hang around with Jalen Rose, and and we brought up your names, and man, oh man, you should have seen the looks on their faces when we brought up Brian Dutcher and Steve Fisher to them. You guys left some impact on those players. Hey, it was a great time. We had a lot of fun as a group, and uh, won a lot of games, and and enjoyed ourselves along the way. So it was good. I went to the Final Four. I I didn't catch up with a lot of them. I did see Jimmy uh, and a few of the others, but I didn't see all of them. But it was it was a lot of fun to to catch up with Jimmy after a long time. Did you get any um, any sort of satisfaction or any enjoyment out of seeing them get together and have them be, not the focal point because they wanted to make sure it was on the Michigan team itself, but did you enjoy seeing them kind of reunite there in that, that capacity? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was good to see the crowd reaction to them. The Michigan fans uh, really embraced them, in my opinion, and, and gave them a, a loud round of applause at the same time cheering for the current Michigan team, which was more relevant at that time, obviously, because they were playing for a national championship. All right. Well, Coach, obviously we'd love to talk to you about Michigan forever, but I know you want to talk about San Diego State and Kawhi Leonard, and that's why we wanted to have you on. And uh, I'll just start by asking this. How come you're not going to the NBA Finals? You know, Darren, I was thinking that myself. It was kind of like a bucket list thing. I went last year to Miami, and to be honest, if I if I go this year, and I, I haven't ruled it out completely, I would probably go to San Antonio just to shorten the trip a little bit instead of all the way to Miami. Okay. All right. So that makes a little bit of sense then. So that's you can get a straight shot into San Antonio, can't you? Absolutely. Just jump on a direct to San Antonio and shave off about uh, over half the travel time, obviously, to go to, all the way to Miami is a heck of a trip. Well, I don't want to overplay this here, but but will you be watching the NBA Finals with a, uh, a different viewpoint? I mean, will you be watching to see how Kawhi does? And, and I don't know if Juwan's even going to play in the NBA Finals or not, but will you be watching to keep an eye on your former players? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you sit there and you wonder, what is a successful series for Kawhi, other than winning the title, obviously, is the ultimate success. But how do you gauge what type of job he'll do on LeBron? I mean, how do you hold the best player in college basketball to uh, to a game where you feel like you've done a good job? He's almost impossible to stop. You know, I, I mean, you say that, and, and yet everybody has brought his name up as one of the big keys to this series. When he leaves, when he informs you guys as a coaching staff that he's going to go, he's going to turn pro, and he's going to enter the draft, I mean, is there any way that you could imagine, did, did you foresee this coming for Kawhi Leonard? Did you think that this was possible, that he would end up becoming this type of player that, that everybody would be talking about as a huge key to an NBA Finals? Yeah, I think we all knew that Kawhi had uh, a tremendous upside and would be a a really, really good NBA player. The thing that he was, was blessed with playing with such a great team right away. A lot of the early draft picks, they go to the lower teams of the league, the, the teams with the worst records, and obviously they're good players, but they don't enjoy the team success that Kawhi is, is enjoyed. And uh, his was that he fell a little in the draft and yet got traded to a team uh, that was lower in the draft that really coveted him and it turned out to be a, a great move for Kawhi and the San Antonio Spurs. Well, how do you think he's going to do against LeBron? I think he's going to play him as well as anybody can play him. Uh, I don't know what numbers that will mean. If, if he can cut a couple points off his average, if he can uh, create a turnover or two, if he can frustrate him at all. Obviously, you don't stop the best player in, in, in basketball. You just try to slow him down. And it won't be all Kawhi, obviously, uh, Popovich is a great coach. He'll find ways to lend assistance where he can, but Kawhi will be facing, obviously, the defensive challenge of a lifetime to play the MVP of the NBA in the in the 
championship series. Well, knowing him and being around him as much as you have been, and we're talking with Brian Dutcher on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090, how do you think he's anticipating this? I mean, knowing what you know about him, he always struck me as the kind of guy, oh, you want me to, to guard for dad or you want me to guard, you know, the shoe guard, shooting guard, the two guard? How, how do you think he's looking forward to this series? Well, all of us have watched Kawhi's career know that he's always answered the challenge. He's up for a challenge. And so I'm sure he's taking great pride in the fact that uh, they feel he's the guy that they're going to put on LeBron and hopefully contain him. So I know he'll enter this challenge with great pride and effort. And, and uh, where he settles, where it settles the series will have a lot to do with how he's able to defend LeBron over uh, maybe a seven-game series. Now, what about the flip side of it? Because you have Juwan Howard on the other side, and you've known him forever. I mean, it's been 20 whatever years, 20 years exactly since the Fab Five. Uh, how, how much do you have any rooting interest one way or the other with Juwan Howard on one side and Kawhi Leonard on this side? You know, it was so great to see Juwan win a ring last year in uniform. Obviously, he's still on the roster, and he suited up for one game against the Pacers when uh, Birdman got suspended. And he was actually in uniform, but Juwan now right now is relegated to the next seat next to the assistant coaches. He's a, <laughs> a motivator, a insight giver, and, and uh, obviously they felt important enough to the team to bring back in an active role. So whether he gets dressed, if anyone gets hurt, he can dress for a game. You know, I'm proud of both of them. Obviously, I'd like to see have uh, Kawhi have a chance to get a ring, too. Uh, Jawan's got one. I don't want him to feel like I'm cheering against him, but I'd like to someone else share that wealth and let Kawhi get an NBA championship. So you're not rooting against Juwan, but you're definitely rooting for Kawhi. Yeah, I think this is Kawhi's time. This is uh, his time to answer the challenge. You never know when you're going to get back to an NBA final. This could be his one and only. It could be a string of a couple, but I'd like to see him take advantage of his opportunity and help the Spurs get another ring. What has Kawhi's success at the professional level meant to you guys at San Diego State? Obviously, it helps us with the next round of recruiting. I mean, these players come to college, obviously, to help San Diego State win basketball games, but they all share a dream of playing in the NBA. And uh, the dream is a reality here now. We've got Kawhi in the NBA. We had Malcolm with the Chicago Bulls at playoff time, and Jamal's the latest. Hopefully, in a a month, we'll be in that first round somewhere and get on the NBA roster and That does nothing but help uh, the Aztec basketball program at San Diego State University. So do players now talk to you? I mean, you know, it used to be back in the day, and we've said this to the point where you probably wanted to throw up because we'd bring it up so many times. We'd always ask you guys, you know, do do recruits ask you about the Fab Five? Has it changed now? Do they ask you about Kawhi Leonard when you walk into a kid's living room? Absolutely. Kawhi Leonard is is one of the first things that gets brought up. They've either seen him play – uh, they know he's in the playoffs. They know he's on the Spurs. And, you know, this is a different generation. Uh, the Fab Five had its time. And, obviously, there's still a big part of, co- of professional basketball and college basketball with Jalen and Chris on TV and Jawan finishing an 18, 19, 20-year NBA career. They're still relevant. But uh, with this generation, it's about the guys that are going now and in the NBA now, and Kawhi is one of those guys. What have you heard about Franklin? You know, everybody, I know I was going to pay attention to the NBA draft camp there, the one that they do in Chicago, and I didn't realize he was dealing with a foot injury here. What Have you have you seen him since he decided to go pro? Yeah, uh, Jamal was in the office yesterday. He was here for a little treatment on the ankle. It's coming along. I know he's done a shooting workout uh, in Vegas in front of 28 uh, NBA teams. Uh 28 scouts, I don't know how many different teams that represented, Darren. And he's got workouts lined up. He's going to go work out for a number of NBA teams, just shooting the start. As the angle gets better, maybe a little competition with two or three other people they bring in to try out with him. So he's trying to get back into game mode. I think the people are happy with the way he's shooting the ball, and uh, we're hoping Jamal finds himself uh, – firmly in that first round of the draft somewhere. You know, so many people in my business talk about Kawhi Leonard, and they say, you know, the guy, he, you know, he, he just doesn't say a lot. I mean, he's, he's a man of very few words. When we're not around, is he the same way? Is he the same guy with you guys that he is with us? Kawhi is a very quiet kid. He's, he's that way through the recruiting process. It was hard to tell where, where we ever sat with Kawhi because he, <laughs> he didn't say a whole lot. So it was always nerve-wracking to recruit him because – you weren't real sure where you sat with him. When we got him here, he remained a quiet kid. He's got a, a better sense of humor than you get a feel for by watching him. Uh, when he jokes around with his teammates or the coaches, he's got a real good sense of humor. He's a real 
pleasure to be around, but he's a man of few words. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it comes across that way, and you know, which is fine. I just wonder if he's the kind of guy, I mean, do you text him? Do you stay in contact with him? And is he the kind of guy that you stay in touch with the way you stay in touch with other players? Yeah, it's more, you know, obviously I'll drop Kawhi a text occasionally just to wish him well, but I know this is a busy time of the year for him. It's like right now you don't want to bombard him with messages. He's concentrating on the job at hand. And the nice thing with Kawhi is he loves San Diego, so when the season finally ends, uh, he will come back and spend a month or so here in San Diego uh, obviously continuing to work on his game. That's the thing Kawhi does. He never rests. So when the season's over, he might take a week or so off. But uh, don't be surprised in the next month that you would find him in a gym somewhere in San Diego working on his game. All right, before we let you go, we're going to put you on the hot seat here. We're going to ask you to make a prediction on the NBA Finals. Who's your pick? How many games? I got to probably, even though I want the Spurs, I probably got to pick Miami just in the fact uh, they get more home games. And so I think it's always difficult to win a championship unless you have home court advantage. And the way it's set up, Miami will have one extra home game if it goes a distance. So you're going Miami and seven. I'm going Miami and seven. Okay. I mean, I think that's a safe pick. I don't know that there's a wrong pick in this series, you know? I don't know if it's wrong to pick the Spurs in a short series or the Heat in a short series or the Spurs in a long series. I don't know that there's a wrong pick because it all seems logical when you hear people explain why they're picking what they're picking. Absolutely. A lot of good players right now. And, We'll see if the officials have an effect, if uh, everyone can avoid the big injury here in the final uh, week and <laughs> half of the season, and uh, who's playing their absolute best to win a title.